you, Melbourne. Great to see you here tonight. What an audience. Melbourne, how lucky are we? World's most livable city. For the seventh time running, if you don't mind. Yeah! Take that, Geelong. Yeah! Anyway, Geelong. It's like Melbourne 40 years ago, but on ice. I mean, I mean, how bad must the Gold Coast be? Gary Ablett wants to come back to Geelong. But... <laughs> anyway, springtime in Melbourne, and we know what that means, the Spring Racing Carnival. Now, I love the Spring Racing Carnival, but I take exception to all these ads for betting apps that are on the TV at the moment. I mean, they're wall to wall. I saw one the other day. They were promoting a race called the Turak Handicap. I thought, that's... They're not two words you see in the same sentence all that often. <laughs> I mean, last time I looked, disadvantage and hardship in Turak was when a guy had his roller towed away for parking in a clearway. <laughs> anyway, I shouldn't be too hard on Turak. I actually live there. <laughs> Nothing kills a conversation faster than saying you live in Turak. I mean, people think you're rich, you're a snob, that the shit thing doesn't stink. But let me tell you, that's just so not the case. Last week, when I was driving down to Geelong and passing Werribee, my shit was stinking something shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> anyway, this world's most livable city thing, I'm getting a little bit sus of this. I think we've reached peak Melbourne. I mean, who, which cool dude said that we were the world's most livable city? I'll tell you, it wasn't a bloke, it was a magazine called The Economist. Bugger me, I'll take advice from economists and accountants about what's hip when I start taking advice from hipsters about where to invest. <laughs> anyway, Melbourne is so freaking popular at the moment, they've created this housing affordability crisis. So we've all heard these stories where people have shoved unsuspecting, usually students, onto balconies, into bedrooms. So I thought, hey, I'll get in on this act. I'll rent out my spare room in Turek. It's got sweeping views. Anyway, have to say, it's amazing what you can charge an Asian student for a broom cupboard. <laughs> So, with a little extra cash on the side, I thought I'd go out on a date. Spared no expense. Later, best hand job I've ever had. <laughs> Pity she stood me up. <laughs> anyway, so, next day I was in the supermarket and I noticed all these country of origin stickers that are appearing around on the food now. You know, where it tells you where all the food comes from. I thought, yeah, great. Well, why don't we put them on the politicians? I mean, it would have saved all the hassle over this dual citizen crap, wouldn't it? I mean, not that that's any excuse for Barnaby Joyce to be let off the hook. I mean, if I knew that my dad was a New Zealand sheep farmer, I would have been asking him serious questions long ago about why he called me Barnaby. <laughs> anyway, so now we've got this age, ageing population problem now too, and the, the, uh, the, um, the retirement villages are chockers with old blokes. And They've come up with a novel way to get the blood flowing in all these old blokes to get the, you know, get the heart pumping again. They don't, they no longer administer Viagra. Apparently, it's true, they're doing remakes of classic 70s pornos. Yeah. The most popular ones, Debbie, De Debbie does dialysis. Now, now, Ben and Maury said I had to have five minutes, and I'm a little short. So, 
I read today that Fats Domino died, so I thought we'd have a minute's silence, okay? Just to... <laughs> well, that's enough. Anyway, so, did you hear about the bloke with eight testicles? Spoonbank says he's their best owner by four. <laughs> and that's my lot. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.